Hey guys, Rob here with EY Gaming. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the Radeon RX 5700 graphics card. This is an 8GB graphics card which currently comes in two versions. There's the standard version which I have here and then there's also the XT version which is a slightly higher spec one. So at $339.99 this card is basically a direct competitor to the RTX 2060 with the XT version being a direct competitor to the 2060 Super. For this review we're going to be looking at the power color version of this card. So the card itself feels very sturdy and features the blower style cooler which you see on a lot of these reference cards. It's very much similar to previous AMD ones, um, there's not a lot to it really. It's very much a basic sort of minimalistic design, something that some people would probably quite like and uh, some people not so much compared to the sort of normal RGB filled and more sort of interesting designs. But I found in the system that we tested on where there was already RGB lighting inside the PC, it actually reflected quite nicely off all of this. So it did look quite good despite the lack of um, actual lighting on the card. Now the one thing that I did notice uh, when I started unboxing this was how sort of basic the packaging was. Um, having unboxed an RTX 2060 straight from Nvidia, um, one of the founders cards, it was a lot different of an experience when I was unboxing that. It just felt a lot more premium, whereas this was pretty much just basic kind of cardboard. It was well protected, there was definitely nothing that, um, that would have been easily damaged in there, but it just wasn't really the best experience with unboxing. And then it was pretty much just the card inside and then just the uh, quick installation guides that were in the box. And while it's not a huge issue, I just think it's something that's quite nice sometimes, especially when you're spending so much on a a new graphics card it's nice to you know have some decent packaging which makes that kind of unboxing experience just a bit more exciting as well so one of the other things to note which you've probably already noticed is that the card does not have a backplate that's kind of an easy win to me um like having a backplate I, I think it's something that i'd like to see more companies doing more often even with these sort of more basic reference cards just because it gives it that little bit more of a premium feel um, and obviously protects the back as well. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but it's just one of those things that just the addition of that backplate could make the card feel a little bit more premium. So inside the card, for the actual specs, the base clock is 1465 MHz with a boost clock of 1725 MHz. The total memory for this card is 8GB of GDDR6, which is 2GB more than the RTX 2060 has. That's kind of a big thing for this card because one of the key sort of criticisms of the 2060 when it came out was that it was only 6GB of VRAM. So bumping that up to 8GB is definitely a good option and it does mean that generally with this card you are going to get slightly better FPS than the 2060. This also has support for PCIe 4.0 and for the outputs you have three display ports and one HDMI port which is again it's plenty. Um, I don't think you'd really need more than that and they're quite nicely sort of lined up there. So in reviewing this card's performance, we've tested both Apex Legends and Battlefield 5 on a, ranging se a range of settings, but starting at 1440p um, on a 144Hz monitor. The current GPU drivers seem to conflict with MSI Afterburner for me, and I tried a few other different bits of software to try and get some monitoring overlay to work. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it to work, so the FPS has been recorded using Origin's in-game FPS counter. Um, it's one of those, again, little issues that I guess... It's just like a teething thing with the new cards. So I imagine once they've updated the drivers again, it will probably be sorted. But it's just a bit of a oversight, I guess, and something which I found annoying uh, during sort of testing the card. And this also affects the ability to overclock as MSI Afterburner was just not playing at all. However, once we actually got it loaded into some games, the performance pleasantly surprised me. So in Apex Legends, we initially started on high settings and we were seeing around 90 FPS um, consistently on those settings, which was really good. Uh, but generally with Apex Legends, it's going to be played on lower settings, especially for the guys that are playing for esports and want to make sure they get the absolute maximum performance possible. So we also tried it on low settings and that was well up um, in 140 FPS consistently. And that was obviously the max refresh rate of our monitor. So. In that regard, it did really well uh, performance-wise, and uh, we were definitely impressed. So we then loaded up Battlefield 5. Uh, for Battlefield 5, running on Ultra Preset um, at 1440p, we were seeing about 90 FPS again, pretty solidly across the board. And this was during the single player, so unfortunately we couldn't get onto multiplayer, but it would probably be a little bit less on multiplayer, but the single player kind of gave us a rough idea still of how well it was performing. And then we bumped the settings down to low and we saw it sort of spike up to between 100 and 120 
FPS. It sort of varied quite a bit depending on what was happening in the game. So, but overall for Battlefield 5, wasn't bad performance and was definitely sort of on par with the uh, RTX 2060, if not slightly better. So one of the other things I noticed with the card was the noise. Now, it wasn't ridiculously noisy, but I think it would depend on the kind of system that you had um, sort of with your case and what sound dampening you had. Because uh, once it got into load, the fan did ramp up a little bit and uh, start to create some sort of audible noise, which I noticed sort of having the PC on the desk next to me with a tempered glass panel on it. So um, it's worth bearing in mind. It wasn't, as I say, ridiculous, but if you're looking at getting these cards, it might be worth waiting around sort of an extra month until we get the AMD partner cards come out because they'll obviously have sort of more open air designs and potentially be a little bit quieter and also have some presets for overclocking, which would be quite nice as well. So the biggest thing in my opinion that's missing from this card is the features of the RTX 2060. Across the boards, we've seen very slight, a very slight improvement in performance FPS wise over the 2060. But when you look at the features that that card has as well, it's kind of a case of deciding what you what your priorities are. So if you're out there looking for just pure performance, pure gaming, frames per second, getting the maximum for your money, then I'd say this is a really good card to go with. But if you're looking at doing something like streaming or recording your gameplay, um, also if you want to get into ray tracing games, then the RTX cards are definitely still the better choice. Obviously this card has no support for ray tracing in games, um, and it also doesn't really have an equivalent of the NVNC encoder that we see on the RTX cards. And then again with the ray tracing thing, I guess at this kind of price range anyway with an RTX 2060, the ray tracing performance isn't that great. So the biggest thing is going to be stuff like shadow play and streaming. If you're into that, I'd say stick with the RTX cards. If you're looking for pure performance, then AMD has definitely brought a very viable option to the table. So guys, that sums up our video of the RX 5700 graphics cards. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the card, then please leave a comment in the comment section below this video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, then please leave us a like. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.